What you'll hear next may astonish, disturb, and provoke you. Know that the events, characters, and conversations are not real. They are imaginary, concocted for the purpose of release and entertainment. Interpret accordingly. Lick, 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 lick it up, lick it up. Grab an ice cream cone, it's the Box Guy Buddies are back with their child-friendly programming because we've gotten copyright claims from those uh, evil adults. We love to eat the ice cream, we love to play dodgeball in the courtyard, we like to make little glasses made with pipe cleaners because it's so child-friendly and I fucking ate it! Child-fucking-friendly bullshit! Fuck your copyright claims. Ah, Institute of American ah, Adults. Yeah. Ah. Rip it apart. And the lighter, and in we go. Fire in a barrel. Ooh. Here we are. And it will keep my fingertips toasty. Nice and warm, because you got the fingerless gloves on there. Mm -hmm. It's a little chilly. It's uh, it's an almost October day. Is this the last day of September we're recording this it now, Greg? It sure is. It's, it will be October officially once this podcast mm -hmm. is out. And I'm almost knocked over at how quickly summer passed. And here we are, and it's a little bit chilly in the air now. It's gray. It's gross. It's blustery. It's kind of... I like fall, but... Uh, it's cold. It's it's. Let's just be honest. It's I colder now. I think fall is overrated. Do you? I do. It, oh boy! Look, everything's decaying and horrible outside. Right. Can't make up its mind if it's hot or cold. It might look nice, but let's be real. It's the equivalent of like degenerating flesh. It's dementia. It's it's watching your elderly. Listen, parents. I like people to be in two different forms: normal fleshy. Or skeletons. Yes. I don't want in between. Pick it. No one wants in between. Right. No it's, one wants to see rotting flesh. It's a big problem. And a, that is exactly what autumn is to me. Yeah. Because every tree is just rotting its nasty leaves all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's a, everything's cold. It's and like, sad. And everyone's like, oh, I get to finally wear this medium-sized coat that will only be useful for one month of the year before mm -hmm. it turns into like the 30s. Super winter. And then you're just packing it all on, layering it up, going crazy. And I mean, all it is is you try and find the positive. That's why these people are saying that. They come up to you and, oh, cute fall wardrobe. Oh, look at the colors. Oh, I wow, love Thanksgiving. Wow, it's so boring and drab and look, orange. Look at all these holidays that are in this, you know, conveniently placed in this dark, drab, wintry, cold aspect of the year. And it's uh, that's all the reason for it. It's because it's kind of hard to get through, like, five months of gray skies, cold temperatures and just bleh washed just out life yeah yeah washed out life listen the only thing that fall has going for it is halloween yes and we all know how great halloween is it's the best especially the families that don't even fucking try oh yeah and just pour all their candy in a bowl so you wait until they just put the bowl on the table and you take the bowl please take one let's let's all be real all yeah right? let's i be took honest. one one bowl. One bowl from your house. Thank you very much. That's now the one. I have a bowl mm -hmm. inside my burlap sack. Yeah, and it's like you know. I mean, let's let's all just be real. Like when they say, "Please take one," isn't that you're abandoning your candy? There's no one guarding the fort. Like you think children, you think adults are going to listen to a sign? I don't. Halloween is the night of anarchy, my mm -hmm. man. That's right. Mask on or not, I'm taking that fucking sweet. It's a, it's a literal purge, but for children. Mm -hmm. We all and purge. sad adults. I think after Halloween, there is definitely some purging. Like, everyone does it. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a lot of sugar. There's just a lot of stuff happening in your gut. Uh, not really probiotic. Uh, I would say it's Depends amateur. if you get that lame family that gives you, like, vegetables. Kale. Some Kale. some plastic wrapped I kale. I made these delicious kale chips for you, you tonight, you Yuri. You'll thank me later. Listen, it has all natural flavors. It has a wonderful bitter flavor. Yeah, the flavor of dirt. This is shit. This is so crispy. You'll love it. I cut all my gums. I haven't felt my gums since I gave my husband a kiss in 1935. He had eaten some buffalo wings, and they gave my teeth a shaking. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's his corpse on the couch in there! Don't talk bad about my husband. Please let me just go! I'm starting the incantation now. Oh, that's what all the candles are for! Your youth will revive my husband. Mom, why did you leave? Help me! <laughs> Kalima! Kalima! What is that a reference to? That's the sad thing. <laughs> Cause kids are... It's a reference to an old movie that very few people want to remember nowadays. Golly, that's the best one, Temple of Doom. <laughs> it's my favorite. That one's your favorite? It's the Temple of Doom. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hola, hola, boom, boom. Yeah, and then the little, you know, like the heart grabbing and, and all the bug eating and the annoying blonde chick. Yeah, and that's exactly round. why it's the worst one. <laughs> Boy, I sure do love listening to the blonde lady in short round just yeah. go, Inky! For 90% of that fucking movie's runtime. <laughs> well, you have to mute To be it. uncomfortable <laughs> and annoyed. You have to mute it sometimes. You have, two, you have two options in that movie. There's no fun in an adventure. It's fucking self-loathing. Because it's so dark and miserable, what about, or sheer annoyance, because Short Round is the worst. What about when the kids are liberated? Short Round liberates that whole band of kids. Wow, he the did it. The big bearded guy it goes still down. Fall, it falls into that category I said earlier of being insufferable. <laughs> and, then the, and then there's the cart chase. The cart chase, yeah, too. Yeah, insufferable. It's still falling into that, fu that Ins same fucking category. Insufferably fun. That's, insufferably bad. That is, that's why that's the best one. And that's why we're the best one. Hi, thanks for coming back. We're the Boxcar Buddies. I'm Don. I'm Greg. And uh, we, uh, we wanted to, uh, you know, jump in in this boxcar, which we found. This one was conveniently placed, actually. This one was just set up uh, on the southwest side of the city. Uh, Greg and I just walked by it yesterday and thought it might be a nice place. There is some cool moss growing like on the outside of it. It's like nature's kind of taking it back over again. It's uh, it's definitely got a cool like Guillermo del Toro, Pan's Labyrinth kind of vibe to it. Yeah, it's got layers to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's some roots. Uh, some roots are, are forming and all that, so... Uh, and a large <coughs> fawn is speaking to us in Spanish. <laughs> That's right. Hey, uh, yeah, it's it's totally cool. You can hang out out there. You can be our security guy if you don't mind. No quiero toque. Perfect. Yeah. No, I won't. Don't don't worry. I won't do that. But uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why he keeps yelling "why" at us. I know it could be because maybe he. I keep thinking he's about to say something like "porque." No you want here? Why do you want here? You are here. Good for you, no, you crazy no, pan. No, 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 no. <laughs> he loves bread. He's all about naan. He keeps talking about it. He's, he keeps he's pulling been, out these pitas. He's pulling pieces out everywhere. It's in. It's very I feel like he has it stuck in his be his it's, his hair. It's so garlicky. I can smell the wafts of it no, coming. No, oh, no. yes, yes. Thank you. I'd love some. Oh, look at his hooves, Greg. Check out his hooves. Ugh. Oh, there's there's some dippies in there. Oh, that's what that's for? Okay, no. are you sure? I think that might be dirt. Check that it's not poop, because he is coming from the forest. It's like a veggie dip. Oh, okay. Hey, you want to bring that back over here real quick? No. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mmm. Mmm. See? So, yeah. so earthy. Mmm. Very nice. All right, friend, if you just want to go back into the corner and just kind of, like, chill out, we'll, we'll hang out later. Yeah. Right. <laughs> go spout your nonsense over that way. Okay, as long as you sit down, you can do that molting thing that you're doing. That's fine. Yeah, he's, just, <clears throat> he's just shedding his fur for more. Do you think that is the pan? Do you think that's, like, the god? The demigod, I guess, of the forest? Uh, he strikes me more of a Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Let's call him Paul from now on. Hey, thanks, Paul. Uh, yeah, but anyway, what we like to do... <laughs> You're the best. What we like to do, Greg and I, anyway, is uh, we'll, we'll meet up week to week in case this is your first time joining us. We meet up week to week. Uh, we're both homeless on the streets of Chicago, and we, uh, therefore, we usually team up to get food, and to, we've known each other for a couple of years. We would, would team up to get some food, resources, uh, find places to sleep, um, you know, uh, set up parties, all kinds of stuff, and... Eventually, we both realized we had an affinity for content of all kinds. TV shows, movies, video games, comics, books, uh, music. 
you name it, uh, we're trying to escape into it. And uh, and so yeah, your uh, AIDS packets that you get from the hospital, or your uh, high C juice packs, we will take those anytime. Yeah, I'd love to see the nutrients on a uh, Mick latte. Yeah, yeah, happily. Uh, any dollar menu bags, uh, we will definitely dive into those. Um, you know, especially if there's something in it. Yeah, especially that if makes the dive way more fun. Uh huh. And you can always tell mid dive if you're actually going to get something because the air created by your body moving forward, if it's an empty bag, it'll just blow it kind of side to side. Whereas if there's something in there, it'll stay weighted down. So it's like Greg and I will be like Greg, especially like he'll be like a dog mid jump where it's like he realizes that there's food in the bag as his body's going toward it, and it's like the excitement just blossoms, and it's it's something to see, definitely. So uh, do leave your dollar menu bags out. Yeah, so we can cannonball into them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Please, you'll love it. Everybody will love it. It's a huge hit. But uh, anyway, what we also do is we talk about that stuff that, we, uh, that we've seen week to week. Greg has people that he goes with and hangs out with, and they help him consume content. I have the same. And every week we try and find a boxcar and, and discuss the content that we have consumed variously yes and uh this week greg uh i will tell you i uh i went and i hung out with uh the stony island feeder again you know he's uh he's been really it sounds like he always has an open sofa for you he always does he's always got food and straw pile yeah he's always got a straw pile he's always got some food brewing he's got a, he's got that cauldron there's always something in that cauldron and so uh i went down there this past time i had been uh collecting some um Pussy willows, you know, those, uh, are those the hot dog looking plants, you know, the, the ones that sort of. The hot dog ones? Yeah, like with the end. It's a long stem and then it's got that sausage right at the The, end of it. The Oscar Mayer wiener, yeah. Yeah, the cat toy. Yes, yes, exactly. I had been harvesting those. He actually uses them for like some uh, bandages or something. He, he does, he bounds them together and he, he uses them You know, and now that I think about it. For a thing called Pussy Willow, why would it not look like a vagina? I know. It's I, I wondered for my whole life what those things were called, and when I found out, I didn't believe it for like I five years. I just call them water sausages. That's great. It makes me think of water chestnuts, though, that like little Chinese uh, food thing that goes in uh, in those f- to-go containers, the little the little communion things. The ones that are a little of the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, the little communion wafers. It's, fill- that's it's, squ- it's the squ- literal squ- filler of Chinese food. Yeah, yeah. That's what these sliced up might actually taste like, the water the water sausages. I don't know. They strike me as a uh, little meatier. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually take a bite out of one. I will tell you, I just bound them up. I got, Did you get like, a little suckle, though? No, I didn't even lick them. I bound them up, and I, I bound up 50 of them, and I brought them to the feeder. That's a gaggle. That's exactly what he said. He was like, look at that gaggle! And I was like, shit, Tony, what's up, man? Did he put them in a big vase, and he's like, oh, what are them? He's like, I love your sausages! Come here, boy! I'll look, get under my arm! And he does the noogie thing. He always, like, pulls you under the head and does the noogie. I'm like, I mean, ah, that dude, that dude's got, like, barbed wire for armpit hair, so... Oh, I, I know, I, I know. I understand, I... If you haven't, well, because it's a podcast, Don has these big nasty scratches on the side of his face. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Mostly on the right side, but yeah, he's got... You're like s- Harry Potter, but after getting a niggy. I know, and, and the, the lightning bolt is under my right eye instead of like a cool forehead thing. Mine like skews off to the side like a derpy lightning bolt. It's not uh, not a great look, but Stoney does have the... Uh, steel wool armpit hair and he also has a patchy beard and he's he really a great big bushy beard yeah he loves like when he when he argues with people he has this habit of he'll be like oh you disagree with me well let me show you something and he gets up right close against your left cheek and he shouts past your left ear so as you're arguing he just scrapes the little patches of steel wool on his left cheek, he scrapes them against your right cheek. And uh, if you don't expect this, uh, it's it's alarming. It's definitely like you think he might be just like a Euro- It's a European thing. It's like maybe he's a Scottish guy and he comes in, he's coming in for like a kiss on the cheek or something. There's a lot of Celtic origin in his insults. I mean, mm-hmm. one time I saw him like tackle a dude, hold him down. And then he just started rubbing his beard all up and down his face. Yeah, yeah, totally. He was like, you're going to feel this in the morning, yeah! And then that guy died. 
Yeah, he uh, he had AIDS. It turned out it was a separate thing, but uh, the steel wool rubbing definitely didn't help anybody. It made him ugly. Yeah. Oh, it did. Which is why with the closed casket. That's what happened. But uh, anyway, uh, what Stony and I, uh, what what Stony was screening anyway, is he's been on this Netflix kick. Uh, he put on his he put on his new smart TV. He shut down the uh, you know his little lair for the day, and he kind of like had the cauldron brewing, and he put on a Netflix original show. Ozark that we've talked about before. Oh, that's the show about the hillbillies and the drug laundering. And the money laundering, yeah. But season two recently came out about a week ago from when we're recording this, Greg. Season two, or actually maybe a month at this point. I think it's been about a month. Yeah, but this uh, Ozark season two... Uh, dropped on Netflix, and so Stoney was uh, showcasing it to everybody, and, and I sat down and got to burn through the entire thing uh, as that day was going by. Uh, you know, I, I definitely got to try some of the local flavor. He was making some salads, some like some wild salads of, he calls them like urban uh, urban potluck, you know, where it's like everyone just like brings something and he just kind of like... And then he just throws it into the pot. Mm-hmm. And b- puts it on like a low simmer. It's a shame when people bring over like decorations, because he's like, into the pot! Yeah, yeah, he doesn't look at it hard at all he's just like get it in there i love it and i was like oh yeah, hey sure it tastes like a christmas ornament but whatever you know it's all good oh boy i sure do love crayons <laughs> all 24 flavors mixed mm. into this this stew it tastes like wax mm, nice mm, one i taste the rainbow nice one stony but anyway so we watched uh season two of ozark uh over the course of that and uh greg i gotta tell you um you know ozark it reminds me of another Netflix show, Bloodline, if, if anyone has, has seen that. It's also about like a family set in Florida, but they're involved in crime, and there's all this subterfuge and secrets. Because the and, older brother is a dickhead. Yeah, yeah, and they all have their own subplots going on, but it all has to do with like this family down there. And, the re- and Ozark reminds me of that in, in a lot of different ways. But uh, a failing of Bloodline is that the first season was unquestionably the best, I think, of that show. Yeah, it, I could not continue season two no no definitely and after after the reveal of like this is how this shit happened it's like okay i don't care about anything else then right and and you're not the only one who felt that way it was like there was a you know if you haven't seen it we won't spoil it but there is the uh, one character does die at the end of season one and it's a big character and he was very compelling and i wondered after that like how would you move the show forward how how compelling and would the it answer be is they don't they didn't exactly it, it failed that and the reason i bring that up right now is because i was worried ozark might fall into that trap but they do not. Ozark season two, I liked it, I think, better than the first season. Everything they did in the first one, all the seeds they planted, it all it came to fruition and they managed to not just elevate the stakes in the main thing, you know, between like Marty Bird, the money launderer, he he's continuing, obviously, it picks up right from season one where it left off. But it's not just their main stakes. Every other new character they bring in, all the subplots they kick off, everything serves to continue to up the stakes of the main plot line, which is will the birds continue to get away with money laundering for the drug cartel and avoid the FBI, avoid getting caught and going to jail and possibly dying at the hands of the cartel and all that. That's like the main thing. And everything else that happens around that serves to up those stakes. And it really turns into some compelling show. Um, they, you know, just talking about the story, the, it, it, nothing about the main plot line, like, deviated enough to where I was thrown off of that. You, that, they, they do a great job of making you very aware all the time that, like, that is, that's happening. Like, if, if one episode something is going on, like, you've got these characters going on to, like, their own heist or they're trying to, like, orchestrate something... That doesn't, like, next scene, you're right back to something happening with the FBI and the birds, and it's, it's, it, it never lets you forget that those stakes are still very real, and time and is moving. And also possibly rare. And possibly, <laughs> and, and possibly rare. Sometimes well done, you know, it's, it's, it's all depending on the it, taste. That's if you lack flavor. Yes, if you want to just taste like If you want to know what bark. it tastes like uh, to eat charcoal straight from your grill and have... Have it nice or, and well done. Order it well done, people. Yeah, a nice. Want to know what what fucking gas tastes like? Let me tell you. Well done. Dry. <laughs> Indeed, but yeah. So those 
those stakes and uh, and the stakes of Ozark are 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 great. And I just um so so the plot's good. I don't want to get into too many details just because I don't want to worry about spoiling everything because every episode um has some kind of cliffhanger that keeps you going with it. There are a lot of spikes in action and things that happen in the middle of this season. You know, like something happens like at the end of episode four, I think that is a real like it's you just it's kind of out of left field. Did you like jump out of your seat going oh? Ah! Uh, I will, I, you know, Stoney, he really dislikes it when people make noise during the shows. So, uh, uh, Did he make you wear the ball gag then? No, I, thankfully I didn't have to because I was able to keep myself. But there were He already, made me the last time I went there because there, I wouldn't shut up when we were trying to watch uh, Star Trek Troopers. Oh, and, really? Uh, well, that's, that's, that's understandable. Because I kept going, I kept screaming like, Clancy Brown! <laughs> Mr. Quabs! Oh, yay! And then he, he just put the gag in there. He's like, you shut your mouth there! <laughs> How does that taste? Does it taste like crayons? It should. And it, was like, it was in my last tea! <laughs> it yeah. has all the encompassing flavors! It's no Crayola, though! I don't have the rates! I was like, okay. So, uh, so uh, you know, anyway... He, he, there were two other dudes, though, that did have ball gags in their mouth. They, they had already fucked up before I even got there. So when I showed up, they were sitting there just like... Mm, 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 right, right. Yeah, so I, just, I was calling one of them the gimp, and the other one I was just like, I don't even, I don't even give a fuck. I just you're, addressed them as you're gimp. You're G2. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, shut up, gimps. You know, you're... And, then, and then, of course, there's Carla, who has to like spoon-feed them around the ball gags, too, because Stoney's not just going to let them not eat during the thing. So it was all very... He's uh, very gracious, O's. He is, but I try Demanding, not to... Demanding, but gracious. I try not to look at that shit, though, because obviously, you know, there's they're always, like, spittling it up, and there's always, like, a mess coming down, and I'm just trying to watch the show. I'm not trying to watch, like, it's this like baby someone, feeding thing. Like, it's, it's like watching someone being waterboarded, but with soup. It... <laughs> That's exactly... That is exactly uh, what it's like. Super disturbing. Super <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> Uh, anyway, anyway Ozark, for Ozark season two. <laughs> Ozark season two is so good. You really have to check it out. Especially, obviously, if you you, you want to watch the first one, if you haven't seen that, you need to because this the plot is a direct continuation of it. But um, I was thinking about this. If I could boil down the dis- how I would describe season two into two words, I would say power shift because basically. All the dyna- you know, everyone's an individual character in the show, but there are a lot of teams of characters. You've got Marty Bird, who's the protagonist, Jason Bateman, but his wife, Wendy Bird, is definitely his partner. And there are scenes when she's got her own things going on, but a lot of the time they're they're teaming up in order so to accomplish goals. So what you're saying is that at some point in the show that Wendy takes Marty's heart, eats it, and takes all of his powers. Kalima! Therefore, a power shift. <laughs> That, not that literal of it. Not That's that lame. Shift. I was expecting him to. I, I want to see Marty eat someone. Hey, third season. The, I will say they're definitely continuing it. They leave oh, it is on that the direction that they're going for. Cannibalism. It's possible. You I never hope. know. You never know. The stakes like keep the only going. Way we can get these mobsters out of Ozark is to eat them. Listen, the FBI is on our trail. The only way I can get out of it is to eat you. <laughs> and Ozark season three. Well done. <laughs> yeah, gross. Uh, but so the power shift I was talking about, though, is like the dynamic between like, for instance, you go back to season one, Marty in the first episode, he comes up against the cartel. He gets, you know, threatened his life and he makes the unilateral decision to pick up his family and move from Chicago to the Ozark in Missouri. That that decision, it's like his kids are pissed, his wife might be pissed, but like they go with him. He's making the decision. He's definitely like the man in charge. By the end of season two, that dynamic has shifted to Wendy. She emerges throughout this season as the unquestionable queen pin of like what's going on. Her character arc, she becomes super powerful in this one and there is some struggle she just walter white did her way into the top kind of like she you know they in, in the first season they talk they shadow how good she is politically she had a career in politics in chicago and she's just she's good at dealing with people and kind of getting what she wants that is explored tenfold in this season and there are times when conversely Marty actually, because of some events that happen along the course of things, Marty actually starts to seemingly crack up a little bit. Marty's the one who is obviously throughout the show, he's even keeled. He speaks like very little. He speaks when he has to, but in order to save all their lives and stuff. But he's he's seemingly unaffected by a lot of the crazy stuff that goes on. 
that does not continue all the way through season two. Things so we happen. get to see a little bit more out of Jason Bateman. Yes. We're not, we're not just watching him be fucking stone-faced like in everything else he's been in. Right. Because you're, you're I've not, only ever seen him do two things. Stone Cold, the straight man. Right. Or... Michael Bluth. Or, or the dude from Dodgeball. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's, that's goofy. All, that's true. Right, right. That's Those are right, his two Cotton. characters. That's right, Catton. Oh, my God. There he goes. Wow. That, I thought that was illegal in two states. <laughs> right, right, right. The color man for an obscure sport. Right, like so, super goofy. No, no, no. He is... He, he, you do see a little bit more from him. And it's not, you know, it starts off the same way, but as the season goes on, he does start to crack up a little bit, which forces Wendy to kind of step up and start taking the reins a little bit more. And they do have some power struggle between the two of them. They, they both start making some decisions on their own, which Getting obviously into fights the who gets the right or left side of the bed. Classic marriage stuff. I know. You know, it's just like, hey, I, I, ha- know. I have to poop now. Why are Why are you pooping? Hey, I told you that if we have to poop at the same time, that whoever gets in there second has to use the bathtub. It's my turn for the toilet. No, I I had the kids though, so I get the toilet. Get up. Well, I clean the kids. Get up or move your legs out of the way. I'm coming in there. <laughs> Marriage, so weird. But uh, slide over. <laughs> that thanks. if we have to one like this, then we'll have to one like this. We bought the grand prize toilet for a reason. We bought El Grande. These are, these are probably hands down the greatest Jason Bateman impressions <laughs> ever done in podcast and the, form, and the greatest married people impressions. This is this speaks for it's all almost marriages. As if we've been married for like twenty years, yeah, we get it. We just get it. You know, like I just look at you and you're like. I hate him. <laughs> I hate his entire being. I hate his laugh. Mm-hmm. I hate his stupid face. I hate having to make him dinner every night. Eat that, you ungrateful bastard. I microwaved this hungry man for you. I slaved over this to make sure that that brownie didn't get overcooked so your Salisbury steak could actually be edible. Fuck you. My mom was right. I'm leaving. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Anyway, though, uh, Ozark, you know, it, stuff like that. But just um, so Laura Linney dazzles as Wendy, uh, Wendy Bird. She's awesome. Um, uh, Jason Bateman's sort of uh, right hand uh, woman, Ruth, played by Julia Garner, Ruth Langmore. She 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 goes through a lot. Her dad comes out of prison, so obviously that complicates things. And she's kind of caught between Marty Bird, you know, her her surrogate father, the businessman guy, and her real dad, who's a, who's a fuck up like the like the Langmores. And she's kind of getting pulled in two different directions. She also gets um you know caught in the crossfires of the FBI, who investigate the birds more closely, and that really I mean really messes things up, and it and it provides for opportunities for Julia Garner to act in situations. Situations that are like really, really emotional, and she just does a phenomenal job. So I mean, she did really well. And the old man that lives in their house, Buddy, uh, who was played by Harris Eulin. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting the old guy. That's like, yes. I just want to live in the basement until I die. He now, uh, you know, again, I won't spoil anything for how the season goes, but he has, um, he has a big role. And he does a lot more with and for the family in this season. Because obviously the events of the first season, he gets pulled into their drama a little more. And he leans into that. And he becomes kind of an integral part of uh, their whole scheme. And just that, the acting by him is wonderful. His relationship with not just Wendy and Marty, but the kids. He develops strong bonds with the kids and... It, 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 it pans out in, in various ways. But that was one last thing I wanted to say is that also the kids themselves, they they come into their own. And something that I think was a success for Ozark, uh, especially just after watching this second season, is that some shows you feel like that their side characters, the extraneous ones, you feel like they're they're running around and that their subplots they're clearly just there to do something to take away attention away from the main plot. Sometimes right. it can feel that way. Ozark does a great job of sort of using 
every extraneous character. Like, they find a way to work them into the plot somehow. And they bring the kids along more into this whole thing, and, and the kids are doing their own things. And the actions of Marty and Wendy affect not just their own kids, but the Langmores and the town and stuff. And it's, it's, it's really, I, I thought that that was well done. Um, there, there were a couple of things that were a little iffy. I will, I'll be honest, like, on that same vein, while they do use the characters a lot, there's a subplot later in the season with their daughter, Charlotte, which I honestly, like, it, it does, it, it's, it tries to up the stakes and it kind of does, but it just sort of feels annoying and it's like, it's a little... Feels just, tacked on? Yeah, it feels like, like they were just trying to give her something to do and so it, it just... We already made her do this creepy, awkward boat sex thing last season. Let's up the ante. Yeah. You're gonna have, you're gonna have creepy, awkward non-sex with this terrible trailer park boy, and and then you're gonna, you're gonna hate your parents, and your that doesn't actually happen. None of none of this stuff is. I was gonna say that just sounds like the show. No, no, it it, it doesn't. And I had I was I was just joking around, but like none of that does happen. But the thing that does happen with her later in the season, it is tacked on, and it at least it just feels like it's not uh, it's not necessary. So there was some of that, some dialogue stuff, um, but. That's like a minor, minor detractor. Overall, um, season two of Ozark ramps up everything that was good about the first season and just make it pulls you into it a lot more. And it's it all the subterfuge and all the stakes and the suspense. It just it ramps up a lot like Breaking Bad did. Like it's a steady, gradual climb upward. Every single episode kind of ups the stakes and makes you pulls you in a little more and wonder about what's going to actually happen. And uh, and that was a success on their part. So if you've seen season one, definitely look into the second one. It You won't regret it. And if you haven't seen either of them, do yourself a favor and check them out, especially if you liked you know, Breaking Bad or Bloodline, any one of those suspenseful type of shows. Nice. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then uh, and then I, I fucking dipped out of Stoney's real quick. I was after ten hours of because there's ten episodes of that's uh of season. That's a two. lot of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like three in the morning when I dipped out of there. I'm always afraid of staying there for longer than two hours because I feel like he's gonna like root me into his house. Yeah. You're gonna become my new house plant. That's right. I'm gonna water you when I feel like it. Wow. You might die. I'm not very good at taking care of the house. Everything around me dies. That's what mom said. Yeah, he's he's always talking about family stuff. Hey, me stuff. too. <laughs> totally. Yeah, he's he's always talking about that stuff, Stony. But yeah, he actually did let me stay. He didn't. Uh, aside from the you know the ball gag soup dribbling, there was not too much weird stuff going on. Um, a lot of cats outside at three in the morning, but there always are. You know, smelling the stuff. But yeah, that was I it. Mean, who doesn't love smelling stuff? I do. Love smelling, smelling stuff. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's how I got into trouble this week. Did you? Oh yeah, smelled so, some stuff. I was uh, I was hanging out on Lakeshore Drive because I was like, I want, I want to see the lake before it gets too cold. Yes, because once it turns into November, like keep me away from downtown, keep me away from the lake, keep me away from any kind of water. Forget about so it. I don't even shower. It's like it's ho- It's horrible. It's wind. cold. Mm-hmm. The wind is bitter. And mean yeah. and nasty. It's ruthless. And it really shoots through the buildings some ways. You know when you're walking around downtown and you just you'll pass an alleyway and yeah. you get like spiked by this, you know, cold fist of it's wind. Like, it's like a knife yeah. in the air. Right. And you like look over and you're expecting to see like Aang, the last airbender in there, but it's not. There's some homeless dude and it's like, Hey Bill, what's happening? Happens. Oh good old Bill. Yeah, he's always just down there. The air builder. <laughs> it's just <laughs> He's just blowing. He builds, his, no, his, his cheeks, cheeks keep inflating because he keeps building up the air. He, one day he'll unleash it and he'll leave like Aurora Borealis on us. Yeah, he will. He will. He's totally like that one of those sacks from uh, the 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 Odyssey. You know, like the you know the the wind sack that like guides them in different directions when he pops the cap off. Yeah, that's Bill. One day that cap's popping off. Well, I didn't see Bill when I was doing my sniffing around, but I was going up Lakeshore. I went to the beach. Hanging out, and uh, I got a little tingle on my nose. I was like, oh, what's that? Caught a scent. Yeah, you know that uh, that restaurant that's shaped like a boat? Oh, yeah. Castaways. Castaways. I, s- I smelled something tantalizing from there. Mm. So I go over, and I see that there's this whole family reunion going on there. Like, they were all, like, raised in the South Loop, 
Mm. Just hanging out, and they were like, oh, let's go to Castaways and a little fun adventure. <laughs> that South Loop let's accent have, they have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to have some delicious, nutritious fish as we eat in this giant boat. Doesn't that sound good, dear? Yeah, that sounds very good. What were there, like eight, nine of them? All t- there were 12 <laughs> of them, <laughs> some of them talking at once. Does anyone, <laughs> does, anyone I love the does anyone have any ketchup? Yeah, I got plenty of ketchup over here, Ted. Don't put it on your hot dog, Bill. You would dare put ketchup on a hot dog? I should disown you from this family. I want to fries. So, uh, their accents were very easy to replicate. They all look like shit, because <laughs> all their clothes were just not the greatest. Gotta say, the least <laughs> fashionable family I've ever seen in my entire life. Damn. So, I just looked at my own getup, and I went, you know, I think I, I think I can get away with this. Oh, no so way. I, so, I just snuck into one of the tables, and I'm like, hey, Dad! Well done! Oh, I sure do love hamburgers! Yeah, me too. Yeah, I also love hamburgers. <laughs> this is great. And it it was great. It's it was it was a solid hour of them giving me food. Oh, dude, that's like, oh, it was so hard to get here from Cicero. Oh, oh Jesus! Yeah. Did you did you have like a backstory plan? Did you have any like identity? Sort I of just already? I just kind of filled in the blanks whenever they they asked stuff. They're like, "How's Jill? Ah, oh, Jill's great. Sure, that's she's I love taking that. care of the dogs right now. I thought you had cats. Yeah, oh, we got rid of the cats and replaced it with dogs. Cat dogs. We have cat dogs now. You know, like that Nickelodeon cartoon. It's half and half. Yeah. Where do they poop? Yeah, I haven't I found out yet. We'll never find out. I think it's from their armpits. <laughs> well, okay. I think it's from their armpits, too. I've been watching that show since I was ten. <laughs> Can we get another round over here? Yeah, and they just kept feeding me and feeding me. That's nice. I realized that the youngest junior was uh, was playing on his Switch, though. Oh, junior. He's like, hey, junior, you want to pass that around? Your, your old cousin Larry here? <laughs> One-armed Larry? No, I'm still bleeding. So I pushed him real hard, and the rest of the family laughed because <laughs> it seems like it's just a ritual to, like, constantly shit on the children oh wow so i snagged that switch out of his hand and i'm looking around on his uh his board and i'm like oh what do you got going on here what games here oh mario odyssey played it uh zelda played it and then i noticed something something new something that i've heard a lot of good things about Mm -hmm. and i figured it was time to give it a shot i played the hollow knight the hollow knight yeah I seem to have had a recent string of playing a shit ton of Metroidvanias. Mm-hmm. But, like, most of them were good. Hollow Knight is the one, like, the indie Metroidvania that has, like, the praise. It is, like, the indie Metroidvania to play. mm mm-hmm. uh, So, the Hollow Knight is a Kickstarter game. Super fucking successful. I think it came out 2015? Came out a couple years ago. uh, And fucking crushed reviews. Like, it was getting, like, 9s out of 10s. Uh, Players love it. And getting into, like, its actual atmosphere and its story and its gameplay, I'm like, this is really fucking good. Yeah. This is shockingly good. Uh, So you are a nameless knight. In a world full of bugs. Ooh. So everything is kind of bug-related. So uh, the main character has his own sword, which is called a nail. All right. Which I'm guessing it's just, you know, a nail because he's they're fucking bugs. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he stumbles across a town that says that it used to be an ancient civilization uh, that had this huge, like government and kingdom and whatnot but it fell to ruins and the ruins are cursed and pretty much anyone that goes into the ruins are most likely either going to die or if they're strong enough and they still continue living there they become super corrupt because of the tantalizing nature of what is in the depths Ooh, uh it's very dark soulsy i can see a lot of inspiration from dark souls for multiple reasons a the atmosphere of the entire game, it's very, very foreboding. It's very uh, 
I don't want to say dark because it doesn't try to be like edgy at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes you feel uncomfortable. It's not horror, but it's definitely a sense of like what went down here was bad. Gotcha. So yeah, like they they make the curse feel alive, like it's still yeah. present there. And you can definitely see it in a lot of the bosses you fight because they are just corrupted citizens of the town. Mm -hmm. Just members who have been in that dark, deep hole for too long, right. and it's fucked with their brains. Uh, God, the character sprites and the background animations and the music are so good. The music is fucking beautiful to listen to. That's great. Uh, I'm used to, like, playing games and then doing something on the side, too. Like, I'll... I'll, I'll boot up my little robot hand and put on a podcast or a YouTube channel or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I like doing like two or three things at once, try and get as much shit in as possible. Sure, yeah. Uh, it definitely helped with Dragon Quest. Yeah. Because like going through a fucking hundred plus hour game and then having, you know, a movie on the side helps. Yeah. Uh, it's being efficient with your time. Yeah. But I find it super hard to do anything else but play Hollow Knight when I play Hollow Knight. Interesting. So it's that engaging. It's so engaging, and it's tough, uh, but it doesn't feel unfair. Oh, the, nice. The, the knight, he has no name. I've just been calling him the knight. Uh, he has a very floaty jump. Uh, it takes a, a little second for it to actually input, mm -hmm. and your sword strikes, uh, although they cause a delay and can prevent enemies from hitting you, if you don't perfectly time your swings, enemies can still get into your sight and smack you around. Gotcha. Uh, it also does the Dark Souls thing where you have, instead of um, fire pits, you have benches. Mm -hmm. And at the bench is where you can change your equipment and save your game. Right. Uh, you don't level up like you would in a Souls game. You level up by collecting shit because it's a Metroidvania, so it's these big sprawling maps of items and needing certain abilities in order to traverse them. Sure. Uh, and it also has the looming presence of death. So if you die and you're knocked out, what happens is your soul is left over in the room where you died. If you make it back to where you were previously and kill your own soul, you'll absorb it, you'll get all the money that you drop. But oh, if that's you, great. But if you die... Before reaching your soul, whatever money you had on hand it's is gone. gone. Oh, boy. But eventually you'll find a bank, so you can leave your money with the bank. Beautiful. That's got uh, to feel great when you reach that thing. It's so good when you find a bank, and I'm like, he, hold on to my, like, thousand... Uh, I don't know what they call the money in this. It seems like it's, like, warts. Ugh. Like, the coins you get are, like, they look like seashells, uh -huh. but they're all lumpy and shit. Oh. Yeah, it's gross. I'm like, ooh. Warts. It, what is this, a skin tag? You could keep all it's these. It's a skin tag token. <laughs> it's disgusting. Uh, keep my whole box of them, actually. Uh, but I, I love the way that you control the characters. So when you get hit, there's obvious knockback. There are definitely hazards where it's like, oh, you think jumping across this thing is going to be safe? No, there are going to be falling spikes, and they'll fall almost immediately after you land in an area. Uh, but it teaches you that very fast. The The very first part of the game, it's like, okay, this is how the mechanics are going to work. You have a sword strike. You can use it to get extra jumps by striking the ground at the right time during hazards mm -hmm. to get over puzzles like that. Shows you a little bit of combat against super easy monsters. Uh... And it's just easy to pick up what they're putting down. You see a monster design, you know immediately what it's going to do. Like, one of the first enemies you run into, it's like a, a ladybug-looking thing. Mm -hmm. It just charges at you. And it's a normal charge. It's like, okay, well, I can still hit it, jump around it, and do whatever. Then you'll run into a variant where it's got a beetle horn. So you know what it's going to do. It's going to charge you with its head. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be faster uh, you run into mosquitoes. The first mosquitoes you run into, they just follow you around because it's the beginning of the game. When you find more mosquitoes, they'll actively follow you and dart at you like a mosquito. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find, like, bugs that hide in bushes, and if they get into a bush before uh, you can catch them, they'll turn into this big bush monster 
and charge at you. Uh, it's It keeps you on your toes, but once you find an encounter with one monster, you will know its attack patterns very quickly. That's nice. So it's, yeah, like you said, it doesn't feel unfair where you're getting no. blindsided by new stuff all the time. The other mechanic in this game is actual soul. So every time you attack something, you have this little meter uh, at, at the top left where your health bar is start to fill up. Mm. You have five hits until you can die. But if you keep hitting things and collect enough soul... That's how you recharge your energy. Ah. So the secret in boss fights is to hit enemies, wait until they're doing an attack that is nowhere near you, and then replenish your health. It requires a certain amount of soul in order for one health point to return, mm -hmm. but it also leaves you completely vulnerable. So you have to do an action in order to you transmit to your action. energy to health. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, your soul meter can also be used to shoot uh, special weapons. So like one of the first ones you get is a soul beam. So rather than like rehealing yourself, you shoot a beam out and it does a shit ton of damage nice. and it's long range. Yeah, that's good. So there's a lot of like... There's a lot of strategy to think about what your next move's going to right, do. Right, right. And then as you start getting more and more abilities added to the knight, it makes the platforming much harder. You get a wall jump like Mega Man X. Oh, you get cool. A, you get an air dash. Um, I'm not super far into it. I think I'm about, like, three hours. Uh, they didn't stay that whole time, and the kid got really antsy about <laughs> getting his... Give me that thing back. Give me my hollow knight back. I, I hate like talking to my family. My Uncle Matt always flicks my nose. Ow! Stop it. I think that will shit. That's what you get for eating my applesauce. <laughs> the fucked up family. I was like, why aren't you ordering, like, the crabs or anything like that? And what do you mean? You know that we're all allergic to shellfish. <laughs> Cousin <laughs> Lenny? I was, oh, uh-oh. Oh, Jesus. Uh -oh. I better get out of here. So I was trying, I was trying to cram in as much Hollow Knight as I could possibly do. Yeah. Uh, but there's so, it's such a dense game, but it never feels like it's, like, too much. Another feature I really like about the game is it really puts an emphasis on you need to explore shit in order to know where things are. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you enter a new area, you have no map. Ooh. And you can find a cartographer that shows up in all the levels. You talk to him and buy a map from him. You get a map, but it's not a filled-in map. It's him saying, this is the most I've gotten after entering this area. Wow. You have to fill in the blanks. Dang. And you do that by traveling the, you the area? The only way you will be able to tell a room is if you actually explore it. Uh, but early in the game... You don't have access to a quill. Oh, I see. If you don't have a quill... So you're not filling anything you're in. You're not filling in any of the blanks. Oh, brutal. The other brutal thing, too, is you can't fill in your map until you sit down at a bench. Oh, no. So, so you explore you will, an area. You explore an area until you find a bench. As soon as you sit down at the bench, it fills in all the locations you've been to. If you die, uh, it will revive you from the last bench you were at. That progress will be saved. Oh, if you explore a place? Yes. Oh, that's nice. Which is good, because I was like, if I die and I have to try and navigate through that shit again, Ouch. fuck you. Yeah, exactly. That's a lot of time, That's man. a That's a lot of time, and that's a lot more difficulty for, like, making this elongated for no good reason. Totally. But I can safely say that Hollow Knight is probably one of the strongest indie Metroidvania play like games I've ever played. Yeah, it sounds great. It sounds it's very fulfilling. Fucking gorgeous. Yeah. It's so well animated. The backgrounds look so good and the music is so good. Yeah, I, I I love that I love all of that. That sounds like a great game to throw yourself into. And especially as you said, like sort of the way that it it's so complete, it sounds like, which I'm sure is part of how it's so engaging, and that's why they're they do all those parts to keep it so that you focus all your attention on it yeah. instead of like you know other games where you can watch stuff and play it at the same time the best part is it's on everything now nice uh the ps4 version i think was just released it's like the game of the year edition so it has all the dlc shit very cool the switch got that version too i think like a couple months ago uh it's on every system now beautiful so i highly recommend this game it's dirt cheap it's like uh, it was like 
15 bucks, I think that's what the kid was saying. Beautiful. He was like, I have to, I have to mow a lot of lawns for this. I was like, thank you for mowing the lawns for my enjoyment. You can come, by, come by and mow my lawn again anytime, kid. <laughs> Pan, no, we don't need our, mo- our lawn mode. I will have some more non, though. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Mmm. Mmm. Have you ever seen Spawn, Pan? Have you ever seen that movie? It's fun. You should watch it. I think you'd like it. None. None, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. It's okay. See, he's so polite. He's so polite. He is He is a nice guy. But, uh, Thanks, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Paul. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, no, back in the corner is fine. You can use the stool. You can use the stool. It's fine. Anyway, um... Well, Paul's uh, purring in the background over there. We're uh, we're gonna get to this point in the show now, Greg and I, where we like to uh, de- dig into this treasure trove that we have at gggregslist at gmail dot com. Three G's regslist at gmail dot com. Yeah, it's your perfect opportunity to join us on the show. Just feel free to send us any kind of question, any anything. random goofy nonsense. In fact, let's read this question so they have a feeling of what to submit to us. Here's an example, just in case you were wondering. Who do we have today, Greg? Today, we've got our new friend, Nigel from London. Nigel from London! Nigel from Thornberry! Do you think he talks like this? Nigel! No, I think think Nigel's a lot softer spoken. I think he's up here. I think he's down here. I think he's a a, a twit. I I think he's uptight and a twit. I think he's a bit of a scatterbrain. And uh, he's a bit of a grove robber. You think so? He robs graves, do he? I think he digs holes, finds dead people, and grabs their stuff. He's got no moral centre. No, but he does it because his mum is sick. Oh, I'll th- I see, I see. So he's got motivation, yeah, I saw it himself. What's yeah, a dead good. guy going to need with his wallet, eh? Nothing. Know. Nothing. Yeah, you bring up a good point. Cool. Maybe he's down there. Maybe he is down there. Yeah. What well, does not? What does Nigel say? Well, Nigel says not. <laughs> hey, Nigel, welcome Ni- to the show. Nigel didn't say any of this. <laughs> Thank you for uh, sending uh, the thing. In. Nigel does ask us two questions. The first is, if you could pick just one superpower mm. to have for the rest of your life, oh boy, which one would you pick and why? Oh boy, Nigel. I know exactly which one I would have. Please, then you start. Uh. The power to stop time. Really? That's a good one. I would stop time. Because Thump. because I then I can procrastinate for as long as I fucking want. Endless time. Endless. That's fantastic. And would I you... can and and it I wouldn't have an item associated with it. We're, right. we're not gonna do that bullshit of Bart Simpson and Millhouse breaking the watch and then being stuck in time for 30 years. Okay. We're okay. not doing that shit. I can do it with like the snap of a finger. Would you age though during the stopped time? I don't know. That's a question for Neil deGrasse Tyson. I that's think. that's a question for if I actually get the superpower to actually <laughs> test it out. It's a, it's a follow-up question. Here, let's test it. Did it work? You tell me. Fuck. Do you feel older? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I feel one second older. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good one, though. I like that. But yeah, that's I, what I would do. That's that's a good one. I, I didn't think about that one. I would... I honestly... I know it's it's basic, but flight. I, I have to say flight. I really do. Like, I you always... Basic w- fucking vanilla cupcake When I was bitch. a kid, when I was a kid, I would have said super strength. I thought about shape-shifting. I've thought about, like, uh, all about kinds teleporting? of... teleporting? It's like flying, but without the effort. But teleport, teleporting's fun, but like the reason I like flying is because I like the journey. I would like to be able to just float up in there, and even like not just to get places easily, like I would do it as a leisurely activity. I would fucking go up there on a nice day and just like coast, you know, like sort of like a <laughs> like a Peter Pan fly, you know, put the hands behind my head, you know, never Hopefully grow up. Hopefully not fall into a jet engine and get shredded to pieces. Ideally not, no. And, and you know, now that you bring and that it, up, as, as we go forward in time, there'll be more air traffic up there so oh you would be keep tr- moving forward in time i would stay where you'd, i'm at you'd stay right where you're at too yeah eventually i would be like an old ass man flying up there i'd be like <laughs> my knees are shit but i can still get around <laughs> i don't understand why all my joints aren't working anymore look at my legs flap around my cartilage is I the think only the thing the incantation keeping them together. that my wife casted was not all the way correct she's more of a bitch than a witch i'd say 
<laughs> All right. Love you, honey. <laughs> All right, so those are that's the first question. <laughs> Thanks, Nigel. That's a toughie. That's uh, a good one. Here's the second one. Oh, a two parter. Yeah, so similarly Look at you, Nigel, trying to stuff in a second question in one message. If a genie not not genie like the per, the the correct way to spell it with a D. You spelled it wrong. And not the Disney way with a G. G E N I E. A gene E. Like a pants genie. Oh, De- Levi like, Genie. Like denim Genie. <laughs> denim Genie. Okay, so if a Denim Genie... If a Denim Genie was about to grant you one wish... Fun. ...that you could use for one whole day without any consequences against other people or yourself... Good Lord. What would you wish for? As in, as in, as Nigel puts in parentheses... As in everything will be put back the way it was at the start of the day. Oh, okay. Thank but you for why, illustrating that, Nigel. But why couldn't I have a wish where I could have that forever and it does not go away? I have it. Yeah, the forever. stopping time. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what I would fucking wish for. I would <laughs> wish for the ability to control time. To stop time, yeah. And you'd want to be able to go... Not just stop time. Oh, control it all together. fast forward that shit. You want click. You want to be I click. Want, I want episode. click, but it doesn't have the auto settings. I can just rewind right. or fast forward time. Yeah. Like, man, you know what's really fucking boring? Waiting for my popcorn to pop. <laughs> Up. Done. Thank you. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, yum. it's accidentally burnt. <laughs> oh, now it's unburnt. Because I stopped it before it started burning. That sounds nice. Also, you could extrapolate that to, like, a steak. Anything you want to eat. Eliminate cooking time altogether. Conversations, too. Like when someone butts in with a better joke than you. <laughs> you just rewind time, and they take that better joke. You have that power, though, already. Aren't you? You're the one editing, so so you can, you can cut that thing all the time. All but the time. I want to be able to do it without the power of a computer. <laughs> I want to do it at the snap of my fingers. <laughs> I want to erase everything to make me the center of the stage. <laughs> I'm the fucking star. So there you go. That's your answer, Nigel. That's my for fucking Greg. wish that I would have time control powers forever. That's a good one. Um, that's a yeah. And I would use it to make everyone's life horrible, but me. Okay, so that's denim genie. Uh, that's what Greg will ask for if you come here. All right now, here comes the denim genie with great big glowing green eyes where the zipper is. Yeah. And a, and, and a long, Canadian and a long flowing hair that's made of belts. <laughs> Obviously, yes. And sneakers. Or cow- or cowboy boots. What does he have? Sneakers or cowboy boots? Or does he even have legs? I mean, it depends on what kind of genie you're thinking of. I'm thinking of a, a genie with the, with the bell-bottom jeans. Yeah. Some boots. I say boots. Yeah, the definitely. Fur. <laughs> Whole world's looking at her. <laughs> right there, yeah. Um, I a wish with no consequences that way. Um... Boy, that is, I would, I guess I would probably wish f- to try every food in the world. I would like to try, I would literally wish for a, a, a buffet table, like to be in a hall with friends, yourself included, oh, and, I, and I would like oh, it. Oh, wait, that's meaningless because we'd forget about it the next day. Well, but. No, no, we, there would be no consequences, but I wouldn't forget about it. Or does it say I'd forget about it? Everything would be put back the way it was at the start of the next day. So I wouldn't gain any weight. I wouldn't have to digest oh, the stuff. Oh, my man. Yeah, but I would eat everything. You're not thinking everything. of the dietary concerns, so you can eat as many fucking milkshakes as you want, and you're not yes. going to have that wet poo. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. So I would like to have a buffet table with a bunch of friends with every edible food in the world, like everything. Damn, man. And that's, right there. that's a solid fucking wish. Yeah. And the wish where you have zero bad bathroom time after eating the best, the best meal. food. Yes, the best foods ever and no consequences the from that. The best fucking buffet you will ever have in the rest of your life. You're not going to get sick too, so it doesn't matter if you're like accidentally locking lips with someone as you eat spaghetti together totally that's exactly right no cuts right no stds like there's nothing there's, there's no nothing. consequences it's just, it just turns into a weird food orgy and everything's fine <laughs> there's nothing weird about it because everything goes back to normal the next day that's my wish nigel that is my wish right there. that's an amazing wish <laughs> and i wish i had something that cool <laughs> hey this is it's... where the time travel thing would come in and i would take your fucking answer <laughs> 
<laughs> because fuck you, that's way better than mine. <laughs> I don't know. I think they were both pretty good, honestly. And Nigel, I think your questions, both of them, were very good. Thank you for submitting them. Sorry about the unflattering British portrayal of your accents <laughs> before we started. I didn't mean to insult your mother that you're <laughs> viciously stealing from the from the bodies of dead people right. in order for her to not be in that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wouldn't that so, be ironic that he starts, you know, grave like he continues grave robbing and he accidentally grave robs his own mother? Uh, yeah, it would. That'd I be guess fucked. If you were a prolific actually, it, grave be, robber, that, eventually you'd come up against like your some of your family. Dude, that just sounds like a stage play. It does. Oh, I've been digging this hole all day. <laughs> digging and digging and of my mother's grave. It's the last one in the cemetery, and I'm not gonna eat if I don't get to sleep tonight. Mum, why didn't you leave me any inheritance? Mommy, why didn't you leave me your gold plated rings? Why'd you leave Dad in the first place? Why'd you leave me in the first place? I'm taking the necklace and I still hate you, bitch. Yeah, Nigel, sorry again about that. We're, we're, I don't know why we can't compliment you effectively right, enough. That, this is where I reverse time <laughs> to make sure that whole musical number never happened. It never happened. And therefore, we're more endearing. This is a great power. You see, this is what I'm talking about. It's a, it's, it's a life redo button. It's amazing. Like, that's a good idea. Uh, and yeah, I, 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 I'm wishing, I'm wishing for that <laughs> after the songs. <laughs> Definitely. That's a good one. But thank you. Appreciate it, Nigel. And uh, hopefully that if you were wondering some of the things that you can send to gregslist at gmail.com, something along those lines yeah, or something completely those different. Random questions. You can ask us about like, what's our day been? Uh, we've already answered questions like our favorite movies and our favorite games. So Feel free to submit anything else. Our favorite albums, favorite musicians, favorite books, any anything. I mean, favorites are super easy to do. Yeah. So feel free to ask a favorite, or if you want to get a little weird, like Nigel and his genie, you can jump in with a weird question. Yeah. You anything is welcome. We're you are totally happy to hear from you, even if you want to just say something about like, hey, found your podcast. You guys suck. Thanks. I mean, we'll 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 read it. <laughs> we'll read it. Any anything at all. It's cool. It's we'll cool. Do it all. But uh, anyway, uh, just a quick recap. Greg recommending Hollow Knight, the Hollow Knight, uh, for uh, any system, a uh, video game, and uh, I'm recommending Ozark, both seasons, but specifically season two. Really, really good show, a lot of fun. So uh, check both of those out if you are so inclined. And uh, Greg, I think let's ride on Paul over to uh, over back over to Stoney's because tonight I'm pretty sure he's having one of those spooky movie marathons down. Oh, the, uh, and you know what? Paul can definitely contribute some of his non to the cauldron. That's perfect. Paul, save that. Oh, my God. His mouth is getting so big. His mouth is so huge. What the hell? Paul, no, just, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for non, too. (laughs) He's shaking his tail. (laughs) Uh, Paul, listen, you're making that face again that's like the angry demigod face, and uh, I don't. I think this is going like more in the direction of like Predator and stuff. Maybe this is going in the root of more like Beetlejuice. Yeah. Uh, oh God. Yeah. And we're there's that sa- there's that like little like sand dune area that's like not too far from us. Should we go for it? He can't follow us over there. No. I he think needs we, like no. We need to take Paul. I need to mount him. You need to. Okay. All hey right. Paul. Hey. Keep him distracted. Hey. Hey. Uh. Hey Paul. Listen. I. How do you. Yeah. How do you get shoes to yeah. fit those? Because I see that your your feet are so like cloven. What Stay kind of shit? Whoa! Yeah, get on him, Greg. Get on him. Get on him. Yeah, riding around. Woo, doggy! Oh, oh, God, he's so slow. Hold him. Hold on to him. Both oh. hands. Hold. Oh, 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 Ow, my back. Oh, buddy. Oh God, no! Paul, no, Paul, no! no, no, no he's no, dancing on him. No, Paul's no, dancing no, on no, Greg. No, oh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, his cloven hooves are just burying themselves in their yard. <coughs> oh. Oh, my body. <coughs> oh, boy, there's a lot of blood on there. That's... <coughs> hey, uh... Hey... <laughs> hey, Paul, what? You're not gonna carry Greg to the hospital? Okay, hey, buddy, listen, uh... 
I'm gonna go find a, a stretcher. Oh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go find a stretcher, and I'm gonna drag you over to uh, uh what's the closest one? The UIC, the medical district, I think. Let's do this. Uh. <laughs> All right, hold on. It's right outside here. Good job. All right, I got it. I got it. Great. Now you're on it. Now you're on Every that thing. Every bone in my body has been crushed. Now you're on it. Now you're on it. And here we go. Oh God, fuck. Lean into it. Lean into it as much as you can. <laughs> my spine. Oh, watch that bump. Watch uh, that bump. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. We'll talk next week. <laughs> I wanna die. <laughs> Everything you just heard was not real, but a falsehood, a made-up trip through a phantasmagoric forest. Breathe.